The House Education and Labor Committee, Congresswoman Virginia Fox of North Carolina, spearheaded a letter yesterday to Education Secretary Miguel Cardona and Attorney General Merrick Garland demanding a committee briefing regarding the Biden administration's recent threats against parents concerned about their children's education. The letter signed by every Republican com committee member stated in part that, quote, violence and threats of violence are never acceptable. But neither are school boards hiding behind law enforcement rather than dealing with parents' sincere concerns. With me now to talk more about this and what potentially may be coming up is a member of the House Education and Labor Committee, Congressman Bob Good of Virginia. Congressman, welcome back to the program. Hello, Tony. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me. And uh, by the way, thanks for being here yesterday with us to kick off the Pray Vote Stand Summit. It was so good to see you here. It was a great event, and I was a real privilege to be with you, and thanks for having me there as well. All right, let's start uh, with the letter. Uh, this was signed by every Republican member. What are you asking for of the Attorney General and the Secretary of Education? Well, we're trying to stand up for parents and those uh, family members who are showing up to school board meetings to advocate on behalf of their children, to challenge uh, these school boards on what's being taught in the classroom. What's happened, as you know, this federal government, this Biden administration continues to consider Americans the greatest threat to America. Imagine that. The greatest threat to America are Americans. They've told the military that the greatest threat to America is their own troops, you know, uh, patriots, conservatives within the ranks of the military. They either want to weaponize the IRS against Americans by hiring 85,000 more IRS agents and, and allowing the IRS to snoop in every banking transaction that we have. And here we have, because parents are showing up and expressing their concern about what's happening in their schools, they're being called domestic terrorists. And you've got the National School Board Association asking for the federal government to use the to use the Department of Justice, the FBI, Homeland Security to go after parents who show up and express concern about their school systems. I mean, there's so much wrong with this. First off, doesn't the FBI have something better to do than track parents who want to find out what's happening in public school classrooms? Yeah, I would think maybe we want to have the Homeland Security and federal law enforcement focusing on our southern border, where we're, we're uh, compromising the security of our nation at the border on a daily basis, facilitated intentionally by this federal government, by this administration, instead of going after parents who just express concern about what's happening in their schools. In the very first, actually the second sentence of the letter from the committee, to the attorney general and to the secretary of education, you bring out a point that actually we talked about on the program yesterday is that you have teachers, you have uh, education uh, administrators lamenting the fact that parents are not involved. They've always they've always put this and, and I agree. Parents need to be involved, but they've always lamented about the reason that we have poor test scores and children are not doing well in school is because parents are not involved in their children's education. And you make this point here. Parent engagement is critical, a critical part of a child's education. This is what they've been blaming the failure of public education on. And now that it's happening, they're complaining, saying it's a threat. The louder they scream, the more it tells us that we're on the right track. Uh, this is democracy in action. When people show up and uh, are engaged and we want parents there, we want to encourage parents there. I've went to eight or nine school board meetings myself in the last couple of months to encourage and stand beside those parents who are challenging their school boards for what's happening, whether it's a teaching of critical race theory, whether it's radical transgender policies in their schools, whether it's forcing their kids to be vaccinated or to wear masks. And, and the school board needs to stand in the gap when the state is wrong or the federal government is wrong. Local government ought to stand in the gap on behalf of parents and their citizens. Well, and Congressman Good, a parent is the one in the eyes of God who is ultimately responsible for the education of their ch their children. They can delegate the authority, but I often talk about this. They cannot delegate the responsibility. So parents have a, res a God-given responsibility to know what is happening in the classrooms and what their children are being exposed to. Absolutely. Terry McAuliffe here in Virginia, of course, doesn't think that he is. He got caught being honest on video uh, during a debate where he said, hey, parents shouldn't have a say in what's being taught. And the left, Tony, as you know, with this terrible spending package, the Dems are trying to ram through Congress that's going to provide free 
childcare, free preschool. They want to have control of our kids from birth, basically. And they don't believe that it's parents who ought to be able to teach and orient their kids, indoctrinate their kids and what they believe in and bring them up according to what their values are. They think the state ought to do that. And our public school education system, the way they're pushing back against parent engagement, is evidence of that. You know, Congressman Good, that's an extremely important point, because in the reconciliation bill, which the uh, you know, is, we don't know what the final number will be, whether it's three point five trillion or four point three trillion or it's one point five trillion, whatever it is. Part of the funding in there is to expand education, public education to actually almost cradle to grave. It, it's going to bring in early childhood education. Uh, looks like it could end up being compulsory. Uh, and, and then we're looking at an expansion of uh, community colleges. But here's the deal. Uh, while parents are now finding out because of the uh, COVID and what happened as uh, they were involved in their children's education, or at least watching what was happening, we now know what they want to do at an even earlier age. And so they want to they want to exclude parents before they start implementing this early childhood education. It's amazing, Tony. They want to force us to pay for it, force parents to pay for it, compulsory taxes that pay for our public education system. We have no school choice here in Virginia, no school choice at all. And yet they want parents to have no say in the curriculum or the policies or the standards that are applied to teach their kids, their most precious resource as parents and our most precious resource as a nation, the future of our country represented by our children. Congressman Bob Good, uh, in the attorney general's memorandum announcing his intentions to create this task force, along with a number of other measures he's taking, he said this is designed to address the rise in criminal conduct directed towards school personnel. Have they provided any evidence of uh, this criminal violent actions or activity that's been taking place? I've not been able to find anything. This is a phony problem that's really an effort by this administration to intimidate, to scare uh, parents from being engaged, to make them a fear they're going to be have the FBI, Department of Justice, Homeland Security sicked on them by the school system. As you know, that very, very rare incident where a parent may truly get out of control. You've got local law enforcement. You've got sheriff deputies there that would keep folks in line in that very rare case that, that something may go awry. But, you know, there's no crime in being angry and being passionate and being intense and, and, and participating, engaged. That's what democracy is. And we encourage that and we support that uh, as it's channeled in the right direction to hold parents, excuse me, hold school systems, hold school administrators, hold school boards accountable for what's going on in our schools. Uh, one final observation from this, Congressman uh, Good is that even in the memorandum from the attorney general, there is a recognition that there is a limit to federal power to prosecute these crimes. And so a part of this task force they're creating is to figure out how the federal government can prosecute something that they have no business to be involved in. Yes, they're saying that that uh, they're calling these parents who show up domestic terrorists and saying they're guilty of hate crimes because they go and they speak out on behalf of their children and they, they dare to challenge the leftist government that's governing their school system on what's happening in their schools and what their children are being taught and what those school policies are. They're being labeled domestic terrorists by this Biden administration. This is what Democrat control looks like, Tony. So final, uh, this is the final question for you, Congressman Bob Good. What would you say to parents across America who are listening? You, you mentioned this, you said this indicates how significant the challenge is, what do parents need to be doing? Well, we're being effective, and that's why we're getting this kind of a reaction. I just want to encourage parents to take it up a notch in terms of participation, in terms of enthusiasm. Don't be dissuaded. Don't be fearful. You know, be careful how we say what we say. I spoke to an education group, a parent group. You know, you wouldn't want to say something, hey, we're coming after you. Say, hey, we're going to vote you out. You know, use specific language that conveys what we're saying. Hey, we're going to hold you accountable at the vote, at the ballot box. We're going to pay attention. We're going to be engaged. And we're going to observe and we're going to show up and make our voices heard. Very good advice. Congressman Bob Good, always great to talk with you. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Tony. God bless you, my friend.